Alan, can you hear me? Hi, Ben. I'm still finishing a snack, so I'm going to shut off my screen until after that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make you a co host, too, Anna. Sarah is coming in. That looked like all we're expecting for committee members today. I think so. Okay. Well, um, we had a slight posting uh, of the time uh, conflict. So we actually posted on one location, 4.30 on the calendar. And then on the rest of the calendar, it actually said five o'clock. Um, so what I'm doing right now essentially is stalling a little bit to see, you know, we can kind of continue this into five o'clock and see if we have anybody show up at five o'clock um, for um, public comment. 
um, and then you'll answer any of those questions uh, during the public comment period. Um, do, um, does anybody at this point in the committee have any questions um, regarding the site visit at South Pleasant Street or McClellan Street in general to ask? I don't have any. Okay. So according to Mass General Law Chapter 87, uh, communities are re required to have a public shade tree hearing um, when removing healthy public shade trees. Uh, and that's what this, is, this hearing is for today, to discuss the re proposed removal of a a Norway maple and an umbrella magnolia uh, in front of um, 225, sorry, wrong address, 197 South Pleasant Street in Amherst. If, uh, Mark, if you want to, again, you know, go over the, the project that you're working on and the proposal to remove the trees and what um, trees that you were proposing to replace. Sure. Um, my name is Mark Andrews. I'm a senior project manager at Amherst College. And um, the uh, adjacent construction project is uh, what we call the Lyceum. <clears throat> it's um, an academic building for our history department and our center for humanistic inquiry. Um, what we're doing is adding to the existing building at 197 South Pleasant Street to the south and to the west um, with a new building that houses most of the academic and office functions associated with the history and chi. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the existing residents, uh, which there used to be two, there's now one, you can see one, um, uh, used to have driveways that went out straight onto South Pleasant Street. Um, of the two residences in question, um, 205 South Pleasant Street, I believe, was the building that we moved, um, and that is now down on Baker Street. Um, forget the house, exact house number, but um, <clears throat> that was moved last summer, I believe, uh, by Barry Roberts, um, and that was uh, an adaptation to avoid um, demolition because our addition basically went right up to the building. Um, the remaining structure, 197 South Pleasant Street, also used to have a driveway that went right out on South Pleasant Street. Both these driveways will be discontinued. Um, and that kind of gives us the opportunity to create um, kind of a nice streetscape, a nice greenway along the road. <clears throat> um, in looking at this, we looked pretty collaboratively with, uh, with DPW. Um, to address an existing accessibility problem at the Walnut Street crosswalk. Um, the Walnut Street crosswalk uh, is sort of sunken down uh, three or four feet from South Pleasant Street. So what actually happens is if you were to cross the street from campus, you cross over at an elevation, drop about three feet, and then you have to sort of work to get that three feet of elevation back again. Um, so uh, in consultation with Jason Skills at DPW <clears throat> um, and Berkshire Design, uh, we sort of came up with this idea to take that crosswalk and push it towards South Pleasant Street. And what that effectively does is it means you don't have to go down to, to fight to come back up again. Um, and in terms of accessibility, it makes it a whole lot better. Um, but taking that crosswalk and pushing it toward uh, South Pleasant Street um, puts the route squarely through the existing Norway maple. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of the background um, on why we're coming to you and why we're asking to take out these couple trees and put in a few more um, sweet gum trees um, and create uh, what we think is going to be a beautiful streetscape. Does the committee have any questions? 
Alan, did, did you say they're proposing to move the trees, the Norway maple and the magnolia? It was uh, remove the trees. It was it Re just remove, not just remove. not yeah. replant. Well, they are going to replant. They are proposing four sweet gums right. along that stretch of road. Right. Oh, I just thought I heard you say moving the trees. So, okay. Thank you. No. <clears throat> no. As as of note, the uh, the southern tree is a Norway maple. The northern trees of magnolia. Any other questions from the committee? All right. Um, in an attempt to continue this conversation until five o'clock, um, I will just add in the tree warden's um, consideration on this. Uh, I, you know. The magnolia, the umbrella magnolia is, you know, the significant, you know, tree for its the magnolia species. It's a large diameter, appears to be relatively healthy, has a, a lot of cavities in there, um, seems to be growing rather rapidly and producing a lot of good new wood to replace the old uh, decaying wood. Um, it's never going to be a large shade tree, so it's not going to, you know, provide a lot of significant shade in that area to the street. Um, the Nora maple appears to be pretty healthy. I couldn't identify any significant issues with it structurally. Um, it seems to be growing just fine. Um, it is a Nora maple, so it is an invasive species, and I always uh, look at that uh, as an opportunity to replace a Norway maple if can if we can. Um, so I, you know, losing a Norway maple, even though it is a, a larger tree and this provides significant shading there and streetscape, uh, you know, framing the street and the sidewalk, um, I do lean more towards Agreeing that if we lost an orange maple, we planted, you know, four sweet gums there, which grow to be large shade trees. Um, that is a plus in my in, in the long term uh, streetscape and in the um, overall tree canopy, you know, for that area. So um, I must admit that I am in favor of of losing an orange maple. Um, again, the magnolia does not; it will never be a large shade tree. So Again, taking the opportunity to remove it, you know, large shade tree can go in uh, for future generations is a good thing, in my opinion. Though it is, uh, it is a beautiful tree when it flowers, um, and is definitely provides something to the streetscape. So um, I have less feel less strongly about removing that tree in the year if it doesn't interfere with the project. Um, I could, I could see leaving it um, and trying to get the other trees planted and growing uh, for the future. So, Mark, did you have any? I mean, I know the sidewalk changes you are proposing to do in your plan here doesn't even impact the magnolia according to these drawings. Um, is, that's pretty much true still that the magnolia, there is no construction impact plan for the magnolia? Um, so no, there isn't any building or pavement impact to the magnolia, not like there is for the Norway. Okay. Um, and so the desire to remove it more is in order to create the streetscape of, you know, for mature at some point in time, it's your sweet gums. Uh, sure, I sought, I sought some clarification from Lauren Stimson, um, our landscape architect, and she was in agreement that the magnolia is a great tree. It, she just thinks it's in the wrong place, um, mm -hmm. that it's really not appropriate for a streetscape tree. Did she say why that is? 
Um, I did not get that deep into conversation with Lauren. <laughs> My apologies. <clears throat> I believe she just, um, yeah, I, I, I honestly couldn't, couldn't do her argument justice uh, mm -hmm. that she wasn't available for this evening. It would be a good understory tree if you were trying to plant something underneath a power line or something like that, where you didn't want one that grew too tall. Um, but uh, there are no power lines yeah. on that side of the street. I have a question, um, just as a, since we were talking about native versus non-native with the Norway. So the proposed trees are American sweet gums, is that right? Correct. And those are not technically native to this portion of New England, correct? It's more Southern Connecticut and further South. So it would be the replacement of a an invasive non-native with a non-invasive non-native basically, but it would still not be native trees. Correct, it would just not be an invasive species. Um, it's a good question. Uh, it's technically non-native, but with the climate changing, it will soon be a native, yeah. That's true, yeah. The Nori maple tent, tends to be, but not always, tends to be a relatively short-lived trees. Most of the Nori maples that were planted, you know, 60 years ago are already aging out and declining around town. Um, and the Nori maple that's there, you know, probably is 40 years old or 30 years old, something like that. It's based on its size. Um, I'm curious about the choice of the sweet gum. Um, just because it drops so much of its pods, it's pretty messy mm -hmm. for like being under a sidewalk. Um, just curious why that decision was made for that tree. Um, I, I think that um, the character of the sweet gum, it did actually not uh, go unnoticed by our landscape department. Um, so it's, it's probably worthwhile saying that Amherst College actually maintains um, through history or compact or however that happens. But I do know that our grounds department has been maintaining this uh, parcel of the town's land for as many years as anyone I talked to could remember. Um, so it didn't go unnoticed that the sweet gums could get a little messy, um, but um, that was um, sort of a liability that our landscape department was was fine but and just to clarify i do believe it is the responsibility of the adjacent property owner correct me if i'm wrong to maintain the area in between the sidewalk and the street not the tree in that area but just like mow the grass and clip the weeds in that yeah i believe we've been taking care of the tree that's my understanding okay yeah yeah, I think Amherst College has been pruning, like the magnolia there, they've been pruning that for years. Um, the town is responsible for, we have been, you know, we do remove the trees when they die um, along that stretch of road. They, uh, we generally do prune them if they get too low in the road and create, you know, uh, obstructing the roadway. Um, Amherst College um, does maintain uh, essentially all the way down to the bike trail, um, all that green space on both sides of the road is actually part of the main common. Um, and you know, over a hundred years ago, there was some kind of pact made between the town and the college at the college would maintain all that land. Um, the tree warden still has jurisdiction over those trees. Um, according to Mass General Law, Chapter 87. But Amherst College does do all of the um, mowing and maintenance, to fall cleanup. Uh, and for a good portion of that, they actually do pay contractors to prune the trees uh, in that area. So. Okay. 
We have uh, nine minutes till five o'clock. So we'll see if, um, if there are no other questions or if people have other questions that may not be directly related to the uh, tree hearing right now. I could talk for nine minutes as a, as a former uh, grass mower in my youth. I could talk, I grew up in Louisiana. I could talk for 10 minutes about how much I hate sweet gum pods. Uh, if you want me just to riff on that, I could go. Um, I'll spare you though. Yeah, every Southern person I talk to, um, they don't have a lot of nice things to say about sweet gums. If my, dad would be, my dad would be appalled to think that anybody's proactively planting a sweet gum tree, but yeah. the landscapers at Amherst College say go. Far be it for me to disagree. It does seem um, kind of strange. It does seem kind of strange to me on a very highly trafficked area. And as an avid biker, I certainly don't want to be biking over those sharp mm -hmm. seed pods. Um, I, I just, I guess, I kind of wish there was another native shade tree species that was proposed. Um, they're just really messy, and kids like to throw them at each other. So <laughs> it just seems like a a poor choice. I mean, I, as tree warden, you know, if if they are given permission to remove the trees and, and desire to plant new trees, I'd be happy to work with their landscape architect to come up with a species that would kind of create the same effect, um, but not necessarily be a, a sweet gum. Um, the, um, sure. I mean, I, I, I think Lauren would be open to something like that, some measure of give and take, like they we're not wild about you taking out the trees, but if you can plant something other than a sweet gum, that makes it a little better. One, go ahead. I was, I was gonna say the sweet gums are, you know, being recommended as a replacement for sugar maple because they have a very similar crown and size and um, nice fall color. Um, and uh, so they are, you know, something that is being planted more and more around here. Julia? Do the sweet gum trees cause issues for like when the town goes to do the sidewalk or street sweep the street there, having all those little leaves down or the pods? The seeds, yeah. So, I mean, again, uh, Amherst College maintains, they actually plow that section of sidewalk, the town does not. Um, and they do maintain the grounds there. They um, our street sweeper does go through there when they sweep, but often um, the Amherst College grounds crew are sweeping the curbs around there before we even get there with the street sweeper. So um, they do a good job in that area. Great. Oaks are, I mean, there are some white oaks over there and the oaks also drop acorns and you know, we do have native trees that drop lots of things that many people find annoying. Um, the button ball tree or sweet gum, um, sycamores and lemon plane trees, horse chestnuts. Um, so it's not uncommon in the New England landscape. I hear our grounds department complain almightily about that grass slope across the street, but not so much about the remnants of the trees. The grass slope apparently is no joke to mow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That and then you have kids sledding down into the road in the winter. We actually have a robotic lawnmower um, because there were too many injuries, people trying to lawn mow with a regular lawnmower. So it's kind of cool if you ever see it, it's a guy with a joystick and this thing that looks like the Mars rover going up and down the hill. That's neat. Yeah. I know um, I've had some discussion with some of your, um, it was college landscaping crew um, or department about planting, you know, continuing the planting of that area up and down to re you know, develop a large tree canopy along the whole stretch of road. So, um, and also on um, some, opportunity to coordinate on the Route 9 Northampton Road project. Once they're done with that, planting a lot of trees on, um, potentially on Amos College property uh, to replace the trees that have been lost. So Amos College is definitely a, a friend 
generally speaking, uh, to trees. We do, um, we do actually have a pretty long list uh, in terms of collaboration with the town, um, DPW and, and you, Alan. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually, um, you, start, you start sort of itemizing the overlap and, and, uh, and how we communicate back and forth. It's, uh, it's actually pretty good. It's really good. You are the biggest landowner in town, so it's it's uh, it's worth having a <laughs> good partnership with you. So. Bigger than UMass, or just yes. I mean, yeah. wow. a lot of open space, a lot of farm fields, hay fields, forested areas, um, is owned by Emerson College. Three minutes to go. Oh, hmm. I also need to reach out to Amherst College um, about the uh, Don Redwoods over on Woodside Ave. Um, the town has to fix a storm drain there and we're gonna need to prune those Don Redwood so that the branches aren't gonna get broken by the excavators. So I believe those are on Amherst College property too. Yeah, um, I saw an email go between Jason and Aaron Hayden today, and I think um, Aaron referenced Jason back to Kenny Lazier in the grounds department okay. about trimming those trees. Yeah, yeah. Jason called me today about that. So. Henry, were those on your tree? Did you end up putting those on the tree tour? We didn't. Um, we kept the tree tour just to the downtown area. Okay. When we do the brochure, when we finally do the brochure, we'll, um, that'll be on the extension. We have a couple extension ideas. I live next to those trees and people stop literally every day to marvel at them and wonder what they are. So. They're um, good trees to uh, nominate, nominate for uh, heritage trees or uh, champion trees. Um, so, yeah, so one, one is uh, right be, right at the neighborhood bus stop. And when they came this morning to do their dig safe work, they said they had considered taking it down. And then when they looked at the Google Earth image, there were actually kids hanging from the trees uh, <laughs> and people standing in front of it. So they decided to leave the tree. <laughs> so, th so that's what Jason meant. He said in his email, he didn't want to ruin the bus stop. I'm like, oh. yeah, that's the bus stop. <laughs> They all wait for the bus in the in the one the larger of the two trees on the south the southernmost tree. Yeah, we'll have to make sure not to prune them so they lose their uh, climbing. Yes, that would be great. Is the tree that um, the tree that was moved? That's now at the. The football field, I guess. Um, is that a heritage tree too? I forget. Camperdown Elm? Huh? The Camperdown Elm? Yes, that's it. I don't uh, know if it is. No. Uh, There's some huge ones at UMass also, but uh, mm. yeah. I'm sure Julian is on it right now, nominating trees all over Amherst. Uh, yep. That was really actually quite that interesting presentation. I've been exploring it a lot. All right, so we have five o'clock. Give it a few minutes to see if anybody comes in. Is there any chance the magnolia can be moved or is it too big to transplant? That is a great question. Um, I thought about that. Um, and it is probably possible to move. Um, it would be a pretty big project. Um, and I was trying to think of where we would put it. 
that we could keep it alive, you know, have enough water and, and stuff to keep it alive. Um, I think if it, I don't know if, um, you know, they have money in the project to do that kind of move. It's pretty expensive. Um, we did look at it with Lauren um, and it really wound up being on the edge of what you could do with a reasonable chance of it surviving and mm -hmm. it was going to be really expensive. You know, it's, you know, in a, as an arborist, you see, you know, you see plenty of presentations on moving large trees and it's really great. And um, they often can succeed if you put the money into the follow-up maintenance uh, to keep them well watered and, um, and pruned over the years following. Um, you know, there is a potential to air spade out around the roots and blow all the soil off during the dormant season. Um, we did move a large beech tree that way. It was probably a, a five inch, six inch diameter beech um, as sort of an experiment that someone gave the town. Maybe you're gonna cut it down or um, we were gonna move it. And so we said, let's try it. And it's still alive, it's, it's on, um, Cushman Common, it's not doing well. Um, it had some damage to the cambium during the move. Uh, we weren't able to protect the cambium enough and it was in early spring when the bark was very uh, tender. So but that would be an interesting move. And we have all the time for that too. It's not really a specimen tree that you would want to move. Right. Yeah. So I don't That's see anybody else coming in. Henry, do you see anybody else that I'm not? No, Bennett's here but without his uh, camera on, but he wasn't at the um, site visit, so he didn't want to vote anyway. Okay. Well, he can vote, even though he's he's hearing he's uh, hearing I, the presentation now. So but. I told him that. Okay. There he is. You're muted, though. I uh, know. I appreciate the option. Sorry about that. Are you, are I'll always you, vote against. I'll always vote against sweet gums, but I don't. If, if I, I'd rather not vote on this one. And I apologize for missing the the, the site visit. Um, so does would, does the committee want to go ahead and um, open up your meeting to vote? And I can temporarily close the tree hearing. And you can have a discussion and then a vote and a recommendation for the tree one. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So that. Uh, not seeing any other uh, attendees joining the discussion at uh, 505, I'm gonna temporarily close the tree hearing and we'll open it up after the Shady Committee uh, votes on a recommendation for the tree warden. Tree hearing is temporarily closed. Does anybody wanna make a motion or is there any discussion about this? Don't all answer at once. I don't think I'm, a, I'm not a voting member, so I'm just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I think you can still make a motion. You just can't vote. So if you have a motion. Well, I make a motion that we um, request both trees be saved. Um, even if it means not doing the sidewalk. I think having, even though it's a Norway maple and the other one, um, you know, may be better in a different location, they're there, they're shade trees. It's an area that 
needs shade and uh, I think it's our duty as a committee to save those trees so I'll second that any other comments no? all right let's take a vote all in favor what's that I was going to say we could um, put something in the motion about um, deliberating on the type of trees to be planted with the tree warden. Maybe there's an alternative to sweet gums that could be explored. Because there would still be two trees planted, even if the trees are saved, right? Or, or some, some trees, presumably street trees would be planted, even if the two trees are saved. So we could ask that. Um, Lauren, just have a conversation with Alan to see if there's something else that would that would work. Unlike Bennett, I like sweet gum trees, and I wouldn't mind having sweet gum trees there. Um, we we could take an opinion on that, but I, mine is you know the opposite of Bennett's on that. No, I would um, might want to ask. It was college if they're still interested in planting all four trees or two trees um, if they don't get a chance to fix the sidewalk. Mark, do you want to? Yeah, sure. Am I allowed to talk now? I kind of thought I was on mute. You can talk. Our, our hearings are open. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I have had Lauren come by. She came by last weekend to take a look at it um, and explore possibilities of a partial answer. I do not have anything to present and could not make a promise to you at this point. Alan, do you still need to approve any trees that go in? Yes, if the trees are being planted in the public way, um, it would be approved uh, by me. So we can have a say at that point. Uh, yes. Hmm? You're talking about say it in species? Yeah. Which is to Sarah's point. So Sarah, can we leave that out of the motion then? Yeah, yeah, that, that answers that question. Okay. So if there's not anything else to say, all in favor of the motion to save both those trees, raise your hand. All opposed? So four to nothing and one abstention. Alan, back to you. Okay, well, do you want to read me the X? So just can you read me the uh, recommendation? Uh, did anybody vote it on this? <laughs> I recommend that we vote to keep both trees that are there now. Did I say more than that? You did actually, you, you ran into a long uh, reason why you wanted to save them, which is. Because having, um, having shade trees in place is worth a lot more than starting from scratch with smaller trees. That's basically what I was saying. Uh, I said, even though the, aren't necessarily the species we would choose, the Norway maple in particular, since they are healthy public shade trees and they provide shade in an area that needs it, I voted that, I motioned that we should save those trees. Mm -hmm. Is that what everyone agreed to? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just yeah, I have to say as, since I I screwed up the time and I was standing there for 45 minutes waiting for the site visit, I, I was kind of just sort of dumbfounded why these two beautiful, healthy trees were slated for removal. So I just couldn't figure it out. All right. Um... Henry, do you want to close your meeting then?
We'll close the public shade tree committee hearing. Go back to the tree warden's tree hearing. Okay. At 511, uh, I'm going to open back up the tree hearing uh, for the removal of two trees. 197 South Pleasant Street. Um, so it's a great discussion. Thank you, Shade Tree Committee. Uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm thinking if folks really want to save those trees, um, there isn't going to be any impact from the construction on the umbrella pine, sorry, the umbrella magnolia. Um, and I guess I could work, I could look at trying to accomplish the sidewalk improvement uh, by preserving the nori maple and pruning it for the clearance and working to minimize the root impact. Um, if the tree then dies, then the town would need to take it down um, and work on replanting at that point in time uh, along the stretch of road there. Um, Mark, what are your, as far as the sidewalk project goes, do you believe that it would be feasible to get the sidewalk in there, even though we're going to do significant damage to the tree? Um, and at some point in time, the tree declines and dies, it would then be removed. We, we can certainly look at it, Alan. Um, I, I can tell you it's impossible to um, avoid the, the canopy, right? So presumably we're going through the root zone um, and I would leave, you know, that probability, I'm an architect by profession, not an arborist. Um, so I, you know, probability of survival is not my domain. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, we can certainly look at that with you. I mean, I'd what I'd like to see is, you know, we never really got an opportunity to see, you know, where the sidewalk actually would need to be, you know, you know grading stakes out there um, and, and knowing where the sidewalk is going in relations to the tree's roots. Uh, you know, we can prune the, the tree canopy to make room for the sidewalk and construction equipment. Um, but, uh, Again, I just don't know based on these drawings um, how the, um, the Google Earth image shows fairly clearly that the canopy, and I'm assuming the root balls, mm -hmm. you know, the root zone's the same as the canopy, extends from over the sidewalk to the curb. Yeah. So obviously, you know, we we came at the problem. Um, by taking out the Norway and putting in a new tree. Um, and I don't, I mean, if you wanted to try and save the Norway, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I would let Lauren answer that question. Yeah. Um, Can we ask that flexible pavers be used? Well, the um, flexible pavers still need a base, um, just not as much base. Um, so you're talking about the rubberized surface uh, as used in areas uh, the town will be experimenting with on uh, Kellogg Ave around the big pin oak trees. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, hmm. So I guess what I, you know, in an ideal world where I, I didn't have to go through another whole tree hearing and postings. <laughs> And going through the, that, um, in an ideal world, what I would like to do is, is say, let's investigate saving the tree. Um, and if we can get the sidewalk laid out with some stakes and get some idea on how much fill or cut is going to take place around the root zone under, under the canopy. Um, if it looks like we can keep the tree, then we'll keep it. If it looks like it's going to be too severely impacted, then uh, 
I would give permission to Amherst College to take it down at their expense and to pay into the uh, replacement fund um, for new trees uh, and to work with them to plant new trees along that stretch. And we would, for the time being, keep the magnolia, um, we'd leave the magnolia, uh, not remove it uh, at this time. I mean, I personally, just a comment that I'd like to make is I personally like the sidewalk right where it is. I think it adds to the streetscape. It is nice for anyone biking down there to go from town to the bike trail um, or into that neighborhood or into Amherst College. And I personally think the sidewalk is nice being a little back from a busy street. Um, I, I agree, it is a nice sidewalk wall back from the road. Um, it is um, for anybody who is you know, differently abled, um, that little section there, <laughs> once you leave Walnut Street uh, heading uphill, that's, a, that's tough. Um, it's tough in the wintertime when it's you know, snowy and icy for people. Um, I don't live on the street. I don't walk it daily. Um, um, it, I know they're working on a traffic pattern to get people, um, you know, from the campus side to that side of the street. Um, and this seems to do that. It, it will change how people coming from further south heading into town will have to cross over the sidewalk there. But, um, so. I think, Mark, would you be uh, willing to investigate further keeping the Norway maple? Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll take and a look at it. If it looks like we're just going to impact too severely the root zone, then I'm going to um, give you permission to take it down. I, I think part of the college hesitancy is it's it's not our tree, and yeah. um, we would be we wouldn't want to take a risk with it, and this is a risk. Um, but yeah, we can certainly look at, um, we've done air spading before we've done different things and, um, yeah, we can, we can talk that through with you. Okay. So my decision then is going to be to keep the magnolia and to work to save the Nori maple, um, if it can't be saved and, uh, college will pay to take down and, uh, pay into the replacement fund, the tree replacement fund. Okay. At that time, then, I'm going to close this part of the tree hearing, and we're going to move on to uh, McClellan Street. Mark, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Thanks. All right. So, Henry, do you see anybody from the general public interested in the McClellan Street tree hearing? There's nobody else on. OK. We lost one of our people. Who do we lose? Oh, we lost Mark. Right, right. <laughs> um, all right. So, anybody have any questions about the removal of the trees on the clones, the white pine? Hmm. I hear no questions. Um, does the committee, does anybody need to hear why we we're proposing to take them down? Not everybody was at the site visit. Um, I, I kind of, I know how I'm going to vote, but I would like to hear since I missed it, if that's okay. Okay. So um, the town is replacing the sidewalk all along McClellan Street from uh, North Pleasant Street over to Lincoln. Um, the four white pine trees there are busting up the sidewalk and causing significant damage to the sidewalk, trip hazards. Um, in order to replace the sidewalk, um, our town engineers are pretty confident that they're going to need to sever the roots in order to do that. Um, even if we do the rubberized surface on some of those trees, um, it would be a, a very short temporary fix. Um, 
then the roots would still continue to um, damage the rubberized surface going forward. Um, as tree warden, um, they are a problem tree for me. They continually drop branches, uh, especially in the wintertime. Uh, we do get complaints about pitch and uh, things falling on cars that park there during the during the year. Um, they have caused uh, significant, I wouldn't say significant, they have caused damage to um, service drops to the houses in there uh, when the branches fail. They are, in my opinion, absolutely the wrong tree for that location. Uh, the grass belt there is, is maybe three feet um, and they are busting up, busting through the um, soil up on, you know, growing into the air because they've run out of root zone against the curb. It's a classic scenario in those pictures where you see an entire root plate of a tree that has been blown over. In this particular scenario, they would blow over towards the house because they have no roots left really holding structurally on the roadside. So the entire rectangular root plate would lift up and the whole tree would fall over um, towards the houses. So I'm in um, uh, big favor of removing those trees and working with the neighbors to plant new trees along the street that won't cause um, these issues. So. What sorts of trees would what sorts of trees might those be? I know you don't know yet, but yeah. So I mean, I think in that area we could get some red maple, uh, possibly some oak. Uh, on the far other side of the road where there's lots of planting space for large trees to grow. Um, that's probably where we'd be putting those. Um, on that side where the white pines are, if we can get trees planted in the setback, we'd want to make sure it's something that wouldn't be, you know, over pruned by the utility company because the power lines do run down that side of the street. So, um, you know, medium sized trees or trees that are strongly upright. Um, and not spreading uh, at maturity. So. And have we heard anything, has the community sent us any emails or any, have we received any sort of feedback on this, the possible plan? Uh, I did get an email from a Marsha Hertel, Hertel of uh, 318 Lincoln Ave as a pedestrian, and I quote, who regularly walks along the sidewalks between Lincoln Ave and Pleasant Street. I'm in favor of the removal of the large pine trees that have been posted. Clearly they have grown too large for the space and they block the street lighting as well as making the sidewalks difficult to navigate. Um, that was the only email I received in favor or opposed to um, those trees. Thank you. And we didn't receive anything to the community, the committee email. Okay. Um, so would the committee like to kind of close the free hearing at this point? The committee can open up your meeting to yeah. make a Okay. So I'm going to close the free hearing temporarily at 525. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion other than me? Sure. I move that the town may take down all four uh, white pine trees um, under the condition that once the sidewalk and sidewalk accessibility work is done, we look into planting new trees in that location. Okay. Any discussion of that? Go ahead, Bennett. I'll preclude discussion. Sorry, I didn't hear that. I was going to second the motion, but I did okay. not want to preclude any discussion. Well, we, we usually discuss after second, but we, I wasn't being that formal. So any discussion now that it's been seconded? I agree with removing the trees. Yeah. Well, should we vote? Okay, all in favor of the motion to remove all four trees on the condition that other planting gets done after the project is done. 
Raise your hand. Okay. So five to nothing, we voted to accept the removal of those trees. All right. Um, you close your meeting then, I guess. All right. The meeting is closed at 526. I will open the meeting at 526 and continue the tree hearing meeting, excuse me. Um, all right, so just to make this quick, I will um, recommend the removal of those trees uh, as requested by DPW and I'll work with the shade tree committee to um, plant that street all up and down the Clown Street. So, sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank you. Alan, one quick question that doesn't affect my vote at all, but is that a spot where, you know, we've noted in some parts of town that it makes sense to plant really um, larger trees to avoid students removing them in the middle of the night or whoever. Is that, I don't, I don't, I know, I feel like I under, I don't know from experience, but McClellan is kind of another late night avenue, I think, um, more of a question than a, a, a recommendation. I, I don't. Uh, do you have any thoughts about whether these would be larger trees or the normal size trees? That is a great question, and I hadn't really thought about that. But you are right; that is a sort of a major, major thoroughfare uh, for students. Um, you know, a good portion of them are, will hopefully be planted in the setback, so they're not going to be directly in the line of traffic. Um, but I would look into that. I could, you know come up with a planting plan and see what we have for money and what we can afford to get, what size trees we can afford to get uh, for that. Thank you. Thank you. Something with thorny bark, perhaps. <laughs> Plant some sweet gums. They'll never want to walk there at night again. Mm. <laughs> you can wrap them with poison ivy too. Could use the non, uh, no, you'd use the, the barbed honey locust tree. Um, yeah. Two to three inch barbs on it. I feel like we need to put some raspberries at the bottom of them too. This meeting's taking a dark turn. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to get over to our other meeting, which is a different link. So if we could finish this up soon, it'd be good. Okay, so I'm gonna close the tree hearing at this point and um, we can turn over to the public shade tree meeting. All right, so it's a different link. We have to leave this meeting and then uh, you have to, somebody has to open up the other meeting, so. I guess that's me. That's right. Uh, See you soon.